Hello, YouTube viewers. My name is Snowman Raikkonen, and if you've noticed, I've been hiding in the shadows over the last few videos on this channel. But now I've taken out your leader, and now Apex F1 will be all mine. <laughs> got super cold for some reason, not too sure why. I think there's a draft in here or something. I'll have to figure that out another time. But anyways, yes, welcome to Stop Chasing Me Carries, and I hope you are all doing well wherever you are in the world. Yes, took a bit of a hiatus, but I'm officially back and better than ever. Good to see all your smiling faces once again, except some of your faces might not be smiling for very long because I'm going to be getting into some controversial topics in this week's video about a particular Red Bull driver, and no, it is not Max Verstappen. If you can figure it out from that, I'm proud of you. So yes, if you guessed Alexander Albon, you would be correct. We're going to be talking about the British Taiwanese driver in this week's video about his very controversial and polarizing career thus far in Formula One. It's been short, but it has been packed with controversy, and I disagree with all the claims that he does not belong in Red Bull. I think he's the man. Let's get into why I think so right now. So apparently my camera decided not to save the clip where I talked about Alex Albon's F2 career. It was very brief, very short. The only notable season was 2018, as we know, and he, he finished third in just his second and final season of Foreman 2, and you can absolutely not scoff at that. He was in an absolute class field with George Russell and Lando Norris. If it weren't for those two, he probably would have won Formula 2 that season, so he absolutely deserved the call-up to, to Formula 1. And then in his call-up to Formula 1, his first season in the sport, he scored 16 points in his 10 races he had before he got moved up to Red Bull Racing, and honestly, that is an extremely solid points haul for a rookie driver in a midfield car. Just look at Brendan Hartley the year before that to know how that can possibly go. And I think we all forget that he showed incredible promise and poise in his rookie season and completely showed why he deserved the call up when Gasly was underperforming at Red Bull. And I still think to this day, that was one of the best rookie seasons of recent history. Also, you cannot discredit the amount of adversity this kid has gone through in his time racing in motorsport. Back in 2012, he was dropped by the Red Bull driver program because he just wasn't good enough for them. And after such, he said, it was a difficult year for me for numerous reasons, not because of my results, but it made me work that much harder. I was on the brink of stopping racing altogether. And since then, I knew how to impress every single time I drove. And fortunately, Dr. Marco gave me a second chance. I mean, this kid has been driving with a chip on his shoulder for the last eight years. And the fact that he even got into Formula One after being dropped by the team that chose him and going into a midfield car that was on the fringe of points and scoring 16 points in 10 races. I'm sorry, but that's just incredibly impressive with the amount of pressure this kid had on his shoulders. Now, when the news broke that Albon would be shifting up into the Red Bull racing seat to replace Pierre Gasly, and subsequently Gasly slotting back into his spot at Toro Rosso, the F1 world was genuinely shocked. I remember waking up that morning and looking at Twitter and just pinching myself because I could not believe the news was real. But he had an amazing first stint with the Red Bull team. In his nine races he had, he scored in eight of them, totaling 78 points. Not to mention... He had nine straight points finishes. That includes a transition from Toro Rosso to Red Bull. This man had the consistency king locked up last year, and I don't think we give him enough credit for it because that is a solid rookie season, driving with two separate cars and scoring points with both of them. And by the end of the season, everyone sang praises to Red Bull, saying they made the perfect decision bringing Albin up and Gasly back down. But then came along... 2020. Now there's been lots of talk here in 2020 saying that Alex Albon no longer belongs with the Red Bull team because of course critics are extremely loud and the second someone underperforms they no longer belong with the team that they're at. But now this is his first full season with the Red Bull team so expectations are obviously going to be higher we can't scoff at that but we need to remember that he is still 24 years of age and he still has lots of room to grow in which he has this season and could he have stayed one more year at Toro Rosso to develop a bit more sure possibly but that's not the reality we're living in 
The reality is he had to get called up because their old driver was no longer performing the way they wanted him to. And Alex Albon has delivered points for the team. It may not have been points that can match his extremely talented teammate, but they're still points. And that's one of the big problems people have been nitpicking Alex Albon for, the fact that he's not able to support his teammate in the fight with Mercedes. But as, we, as we've seen this year, even Max himself is having a hard time keeping up with Mercedes because that car is just so dominant. So how can we expect someone in their first full season with the team, in a car that we know is generally unstable, not as quick as the Mercedes, to then challenge their generational talent teammate? We can't. Exactly. We can't. Alex has 64 points thus far in the season. We're about halfway through so far. And honestly, with the new regulations coming in in 2022, who knows how high he can fly? He has a lot of potential. He's still extremely young. So I think everyone just needs to chill, cool down, and give Alex the chance he deserves. Let him figure out the season get through next year and let's see where he's gone because he has improved he has a podium to his name that's progression that's signs of someone growing as a driver and Alex Albon deserves to continue to prove the haters wrong all right well feel free to attack me down in the comments below I have my Alex Albon armor on ready to defend his name and his honor but thank you so much guys for watching this video feel free to follow me over on Twitter at the Apex F1. I always love having all the conversations over there about the races. The Nurburgring is this weekend. Let's hope that goes well. I don't want to jinx too much, but I hope you guys enjoyed watching this one as much as I enjoyed making it. Feel free to lick the stamp, send that subscribe button down below, drop a like if you really liked it, and don't miss the Apex. Peace.